Okay, so we're going to have a look at essentially taking uh, an improvisation on the trombone and trying to turn it into a brass section within a song. How this came about is I would started recording this song probably about a couple of years ago now and I talked to a friend who was up for coming and trying to do a bit of trombone over the top of it. He hadn't played for about four years but wanted to come and have a go, see what he could do. I was up for that. So he came over and literally just plonked a microphone in front of him and recorded it and um, he just improvised over the top of the instrumentation that I'd already put down. I think the plan was that I was going to pick out maybe a few bits that he'd done and then um, come up with a few solid ideas and he'd come back over and, and we re-recorded it at some point but that never came about but it didn't matter because I picked out those few bits that he'd done and was able to construct something uh, just from the, the few takes that he'd done. So to give you an example of the kind of stuff that he came up with I'll just play a little bit of what he did. <laughs> So, as you can see, pretty rough around the edges, um, like I say, I haven't played for four years, sorry Tom, but there's a few little bits just in that section that uh, that stuck out as something that could go in as, as essentially just a bit of a brass section, and it works a lot better than using VST instruments in terms of having that, that tone and the movement in the instruments itself doing it this way so um, decides to just stick with what we've got so that's an example of the kind of thing he was doing so what I did is cut it up essentially picked out the bits that I thought were would fit in as a little hook something like that within the song also picked out some of the longer notes and with editing with a bit of processing and some um, pitch shifting and tuning was able to create uh, some some harmony with the longer notes and some octave pitch shifting both up and downs to create a much thicker sound for some of the, the, the hooks. So this section here is all the chopping up and what have you that I've done and it sounds like this all together. So all of a sudden it's a bit more of a, a whole section. So I was quite happy with that but there's a few tuning issues, um, there's a few kind of uh, clicks and what have you is where the editing is which I need to go back and, and tidy up. But essentially if we have a look at the, the tuning and the timing we should be able to get it sounding a bit cleaner. Um, and sitting in, sitting in the mix well. What I did at this point was go through and essentially bounce down all this editing into three separate tracks just simply for the ease of tuning rather than having to go in and tune each of the individual files I was able to then go in and um, have a look at all of these files individually and just work through the uh, each, each part. So we have a look in trombone one which I've already done a little bit of editing on I'm using here very audio in Cubase which I think is very similar to Melodyne um, and I think you can get kind of a, a version in um, Autotune 8 as well which will do a similar sort of thing but essentially it analyzes the notes the black line in there is is how close to the exact note it is. So as you can see it's wiggling around a little bit but what I've done is I've gone in and I've tamed it. For instance in this note I've just quantized the pitch a little bit, I might do a little bit more actually, which 
just brings it closer to the root notes and then in terms of straightening the note we can really flatten it out or just keep a bit of movement within the note itself so this on its own sounds a little bit tighter a little bit better So obviously I know that it's tuned a bit better, I know that perhaps nudged a few notes in terms of the timing, but to allow me to do that I always add some drums in to get the rhythm so we know it's all in time. Uh, you can use a click track but it doesn't always do it for me in terms of keeping you in. I find it much easier to have like the drums that are, that are in with the song. And then take some piano, some sort of rhythm instrument that um, you can attach the melody to, get an idea of what it sounds like all together. So once you've got those in place, you can have another listen through, see how it sounds. Okay, so say just perhaps in these areas, this movement of the note just sounds a bit uh, sounds a bit much in places once we've started fiddling with it. So I'm just going to tighten these up a little bit more. Not completely, so I've still got that little bit of movement. Then going to bring the um, quantizing right up to pull it in right to its root note. Okay, much better. So let's bring in the second one, which I've not done anything with yet. Um, just going to play it along on its own to start off with. And visually, we can see timing here isn't too bad. You can just nudge this slightly, and whether or not you've got a program that can, can actually do this, you can still do it just using cutting and time stretching just to, to drag these things, slip editing as well, which I'm sure you can look up and find out about, but this makes it so much easier. Okay. So immediately, We've got a note here I've obviously copied in. It's not going to fit with the melody. We just split it in two, so we're very audio. I can simply just cut it, go back to pitch and warp, and pop it up there. And we should have the melody following the chords a lot better now. Okay, so there's a bit much going on here. I think I'm going to just tighten this up with the straightening tool. I'm just having a listen to it, it's quite difficult sometimes to tell actually what the issue is. So I often find just completely straightening it 
just allows you to pick out exactly what's going on, if it's a wrong note, bad timing, whether it's the tone of the instrument itself. It's just a bit of a fluff, I think. Okay, so I'm going to straighten back down a little bit. I'm going to pop that up there. Perhaps this here as well. This note here. Straighten that. So essentially, I think with this one, the note is rising up into the key note, but it's just rising from the right note. So drag it down a little. Sounds a bit better to it straightening off. Same with that one. I'm just going to tuck the timing in here. It feels like this rise up to the top note just takes a little bit long to get there, which is why it's sounding a bit strange. That's better. We'll do the same with this one. Just squeeze that rise note up. Okay. Other than that, happy with the tuning. Just going to check in on the quantizing. It's like I've already done a little bit. Let's pull it up pretty tight and then have another listen with the instruments behind. Okay, so that sounds okay on its own. Let's bring the first trombone back in, see how they sound together. Okay, that's not bad. Slight discrepancy in timing around this section. In Cubase 10 that's just come out, you're able to actually quantize audio using another another audio file as the as the base for it, which I think can be really handy for things like this. So you can just get everything tied in together, whether it be vocal harmonies or or instruments like this. There we go, so just tuck that in, that's a little bit tighter there. Sometimes even though it's essentially it's the same sample that I've pitch shifted to create this, this thicker sound, the time stretching when it comes to the pitch shifting of the octave just brings things slightly out of time from each other. So you've got to go back and just have a check of those. So let's have a look at the last trombone track. Have a listen to that on its own. <laughs> Okay, so overall, not too bad, but um, there's a few little timing issues, some tone issues going on with uh, the pitch shifting and, and, and sampling, but I'll have to go back and uh, 
have a look at do some EQing for that let's have a little look <laughs> So having a look at these three notes together, they sound like they're pretty much there in tune. Just gonna, yeah, in terms of the quantizing, they're pretty much on that on that note. Um, the rise up into the note is probably a bit much, so I'm just gonna straighten the pitch a touch. And then these two notes, in terms of the drums, are coming in a little bit late, so I'm just going to pull them back in time. Here we are. And then do the same, just quantize, not too bad. And then just tighten them a touch. <laughs> Okay, so again, just a little bit out of time. A bit earlier. Quantizing is not too bad. Straighten it just a touch. And again, the timing's just a little bit out here. Now, because this is in triplets, I can't use the markers up here to pull it into time. Um, if anyone does know how I get this showing triplets when I've got triplets in the quantizing and do let me know because it's a pain in the bum but you can get a general idea of where they're supposed to be just by splitting this area into three so took this one back so it comes in there and then just try and get a nice equal thirds for those timing pull that back a little bit and that sounds a lot better. Quite like the movement of it, so I'm not going to strain it too much. Again, the quantizing is pretty good. But we come in a bit late here, so I'm going to pull this back so the glide up hits at the right place. And again, I want this hitting on the note, so pull that back a bit there. Without listening to that, you can see that's not quite in the right place. And as well, again, little straighten, little quantize. Okay, so that all seems reasonably okay to me there. So I'm just going to again just try and pull in the quantizing, which isn't too bad, and just straighten it a bit just to get those notes nicely tucked in. And then listen to it all together just to make sure there's not any discrepancies in terms of the timing between the three tracks. <laughs> Right, so we've got our finished brass section now. It should be in tune, in time. Um, so it's just a matter now of blending it into the mix and making sure it sounds all right with everything in there all at once. So have a listen.
okay, so that sits in okay. Um, there's still a bit of maybe compression, a bit of EQ, and it be done to make it sit a bit nicer. Um, this is a bit of a rough mix, so I'm sure once I get the leveling and the mixing done of uh, the vocals and other instruments as well, everything will sit quite nicely. So quite pleased with that. Um, so this is just something that you can do, either get a friend around that plays an instrument and just do a bit of improvisation over something you've already written or just do a bit of improvisation and see what you come up with. You can also use short samples and cut them up to create a similar sort of effect, obviously. If it's a um, professional sample, you've got less to do with the timing and the tuning to do with that. I would recommend looking out for if there's any, ever any mixing competitions um, where you're able to get the stems for a particular song. Um, obviously, you've got to think about copyright when it comes into this. But as an example, I once took a full orchestra section, which was part of a mixing competition or remixing competition. Um, I was able to get hold of the, the stems that had the piano, the drums and the full orchestra that they recorded it with it as well. I did loads of heavy ev editing on that, did lots of chopping up, um, timing, tuning on that to create essentially a full orchestra at the back of my track, which sounded really good. Bearing in mind this is probably about 15 years ago I did it, so I'm sure it sounds a lot better now, but I'll put a link at the end of this video if you want to have a listen to that song if you can guess which song it is that I pinched the samples from I'll give you a prize so hopefully this has been some use to you even if it's just messing around with some samples just to create a unique sound that you can uh, have individualized for your own song these videos are designed to help people out that don't have a big budget that want things to sound as good as realistic as possible and taking these samples, rearranging them, whether it's an improvisation you've done yourself or a um, sample that you've managed to find somewhere else. It might be a bit of a fiddle getting it to sound right in your own song, but it's a lot, lot easier and a lot less expensive than employing an arranger, um, getting professional musicians and recording them properly. Uh, but you get good live sounding instruments in your songs. So if there's anything that you think I should do differently or anything that I could improve on please let me know because I'm certainly not claiming to be a master of this I'm just giving you a few tips of things that I use to uh, make a difference and make things sound a bit better um, equally if you've enjoyed it like it comment it subscribe and all that business thank you very much bye